You know me, I'm the type of guy to try and stay positive. Most people saw this killer and immediately wanted to stick their head under a tire. Sadly, I'm already there first, but at least I'm not there because I was disappointed in a Dead by Daylight killer. The Skull Merchant is a character that focuses on one thing. Tracking. There's a bit to her kit that I don't think people appreciate yet, though she is not very strong. You can track people to the ends of the earth, but the ends of the earth is kinda just the exit gates. Her story is that she is a millionaire inspired by a manga that her father was writing. She aggressively worms her way into companies, buys out what she can, and anyone who resists her gets invited to a mountain in the Alps and stabbed. Now imagine what she would have done if he just showed her Scott Pilgrim. The Skull Merchant's power lets her place four drones. The drones have two states, active and scouting. While active, the drone locks onto survivors and helps you track them. Scouting drones sit and wait for the day they can be active drones again. The longer survivors stay inside the active drone's field, the more lock-on they accumulate, revealing their location on a radar, and how are these tools of torment any more than this tool or this tool? The lock-on feature eventually exposes survivors once it's full. However, this comes at the price of doing jack-all if they're injured. The meter decays when they're outside the drone's radius, which means the survivors have control over whether they accumulate lock-on. You deploy the drone fairly quickly, so it's not the biggest deal. However, there is an obnoxious distance to where you can place them. Not only is it a little bit farther than I'd like it to, if any survivor gets hooked near a drone that was just chilling there, it goes up to the great micro center in the sky. Not to become a full critic, but I think Dead by Daylight has come too far to base a power around the exposed status effect. They've used it for other killers in more interesting ways. The ground is treaded, doubly so when so many people are waiting to get run over. After a brief amount of time in active mode, the drones go back to scouting mode. In this state, they broadcast two large tripwires that rotate in a circle. If the wires are tripped, the drone turns back on. If a survivor sneaks up, there's a hacking minigame that disables it altogether. Then they get stuck with a Best Buy security bracelet. If you hold the secondary power button, you can use your radar to check where these are on the map. This shows everyone with one of these Best Buy security bracelets, as well as anyone inside a drone's active radius. The radar is pinpoint accurate and will show you exactly exactly where the survivor is. It even accounts for things like whether they're below or above you. Survivors will need to tolerate this tracker for a set amount of time, and once the Duracell inside goes out, perform the exact same minigame to remove the bracelet. Also, I know the survivors found a magic manual with guides to repair a generator, and we accepted that. Hacking a drone only reminds me that we have let them get too far away with this shit. Survivors aren't supposed to be smart. Grab the drone and slam it on the ground. What are you doing? Trying to see if it runs Doom? Skull Merchant also has a light stealth aspect to her. If you stand in the drone's radius for two seconds, you'll become undetectable, which lingers briefly afterwards. So you can pass through the drone, grab the stealth, and try to get an ambush while you can. On the bright side, your power allows you to reactivate drones from afar or recall them altogether, stopping her from falling down the same pit as Trapper. However, like Trapper, you will spend the last five seconds of the match trying to recall all all of your drones to get as many blood points as possible. Recalling the drones is free, and so is deploying them, but you get a brief cooldown on reactivating them. Positioning these drones is going to be the key to playing her. You only have four, and as the survivors do generators, you're going to need to recall, change your plan, then reset them. Deploying them in the moment will be helpful, but what you really want is someone running towards a place that a drone already is. These would be hotspots like the shack, or places you know survivors want to loop. The drone also does not care about height, which can give you some really good spots depending on your map knowledge. Also, I know we're all trying to treat this killer's release like it's a fucking funeral, but I do want to say that this killer leaves a pretty impressive visual mark on the map, as the lights flare up from around the walls, giving this feeling that the killer is almost everywhere. One of the tricks in her kit is how her drones work with chases. If a survivor is standing within a drone's radius, they become visible on your radar. Combine that with your undetectable status effect from the drone, and you basically have the best mind game potential. You know exactly where the survivor is, while they can't see your stain. There's almost no slowdown to using the radar. The survivor does have to not care about being locked onto, but I think that's sort of what they're going for. If I were to guess, her kit isn't supposed to be so intimidating that the survivors simply leave it, and it can be deployed quickly if they do leave. I should say that this is a hard guess, as the tips and tutorials behavior gives us might as well be fortune cookies at this point. She has a bit of slowdown by placing these on top of generators, but getting downs is going to require a lot of creative strides with the outskirts of her power. Though if you will allow me one eulogy, I am not a character designer. However, I have one question. Why this weapon? Why not a knife? I get the fuck you it's cool argument, but she deploys the drones with her non-dominant hand that is already holding a radar. Why would you invent a giant blade that goes all the way down your arm when a knife is just fine? You could have justified it, I'm looking at the answer. 
It also seems like they were struggling with the add-ons this time, and I mean creatively speaking. There is a sort of cool one that makes the security bracelet destroy pallets. I mean, they're stretching real hard to explain that this is because of a subsonic sound coming from it. If that was the case, the survivor should also be jelly. One has her put a loose screw in the drone, and the sound of it exhausts survivors. Oh, feels so good. There's a good mix of add-ons that cover your bases and all those silly little things, though I think two will become the most popular. One that slows survivors while they're in the drone's radius, and one that speeds up the killer while they're in the drone's radius. And to tick the box on the red add-ons, the prototype rotor gives you a 5% speed buff when you enter a drone that has been activated by a survivor. Unlike the previous add-on, you keep this speed boost until you hit them. However, the fact that this is based on a survivor fucking up means it's still not as good as the purple one. The iridescent manuscript causes the drones you activate to emit a 32 meter terror radius, a tool to both deceive and gain a more prominent stealth ability. However, I think it'll be a lot of fun to build a terror radius loadout with this. Interestingly, this does not remove your terror radius, so it actually makes two of them, allowing you to try funny stuff like Starstruck or Callrophobia if you want to be my little rebel. Normally, I have a section where I look at some of the killer perks that I think would work well with this killer, but saying deadlock once, then picking three random hexes out of a hat doesn't sound nearly as interesting as talking about the lore for a minute. A while ago, I said that I think the worst killers in Dead by Daylight tend to have a disconnect between the lore and the power. The Skull Merchant is that. In fact, I think she's worse because she seems to have 200 ideas jammed into a box. She's a killer that uses surveillance as a power. She's a millionaire, but she's not a technical genius. She drags people out in the middle of nowhere to hunt them, and somehow all of this does 10 backflips and decides it comes from a manga somewhere. Next, she'll be at the Battle of the Bands. This passage is so thick and dense that I don't know how they expected anyone to read it. There was this pretty infamous bit of advice from Yahtzee Croshaw, where he said, if this isn't the most interesting part of your story, why aren't you showing us that? I don't think saying, once, in Japan, there was a man we will never meet. Then he flew to Brazil, and met a woman we will never meet. Then they both made a murderer with infinite resources. See what I'm seeing? Skip this part. Get to here. Her father writing who she would be and creating a self-fulfilling prophecy is interesting, but you spend 20 minutes on that when you have to explain why she uses drones, why she kills, and why she uses that stupid weapon. I don't know, maybe they're saving it for the 10 tomes it would take to tell all of this. Her first perk is Game of Foot. When breaking a pallet or wall while pursuing the obsession, you gain a brief speed boost, and your obsession becomes whoever you have the highest chase time with. This perk is a weapon against the best player you're facing, as they would have the highest chase time. Or maybe you guys are best friends. And nothing is friendlier than pestering the guy already affected by Rancor. In the words of Elmer Fudd, all men compete for the prize of loneliness. 5% isn't a massive amount, though in a situation where the other person is holding the same key as you, who wouldn't want their key to have more power? Thwack is the perk that just shows up to school with a dog tail because it's just so damn quirky. Really, it's simple. After you hook a survivor, the perk activates. The next time you break a pallet or wall, all survivors within a 32 meter radius of you scream and reveal their aura. I think this is a good perk for stealthier killers as it's not dependent on the terror radius. For Skull Merchant herself, I think she already has so many tools to detect survivors that this probably isn't the one you need. And lastly, we have Leverage. This perk also triggers when you put a loser on a hook. Any healing done for the next 30 seconds is done slower, and this effect increases with every subsequent hook. This perk is tricky as to get value from it, you need to have survivors injured when someone gets hooked. It's like Blood Echo in a way. If all of the survivors are healed, you aren't going to get value. That said, 50% slowed healing is not a joke. That's Callrophobia for 30 seconds. To reach the maximum potential of this perk, someone already has to be dead, so it's not too much to expect, but I think it's going to have its uses. Skull Merchant's perks aren't the flashiest, though I could see them working out for people. But it's not anything I'm really going to get grabbed by. Personally, I think it's time Dead by Daylight added a new status effect or two, allowing them to open up the perk design. It's been a real long time since I saw perks that truly got me excited, like Rancor, Dark Devotion, or Haunted Grounds. Something that feels like it's there to add to the narrative of the match. A perk I feel genuinely excited to use. Just a free idea. Maybe repurpose one of Nemesis' zombies into a perk. No callback required. It'd just be neat. As it stands, we get a ton of perks that have minor effects, but a pretty low excitement factor. You know what, though? I said what I said. I'm trying to be positive here. It's been a hot minute since we got a true-to-form trap-setting killer. 
I like a character that sets up zones where she has the advantage. Probably not going to be strong, but I think you guys forget how aggressive the competition for the worst killer in the game is. Skull Merchant isn't the end of the world. It's a killer that will be tougher to play and probably useless at the higher ranks. But if someone can write a 100 page clown guide, if someone sits and tries, I imagine they will find a way forward for her. We will go through a lot of things between this chapter and the next. There is a not unlikely chance that some of us will be dead by then. So if you want your friends to check your Twitter account and find that the last thought you put into the world was being mad at the Skull Merchant, I don't know what to tell you. If you want hardcore looping gameplay, type in almost every time I ran away from the cops into your search bar. Go outside, breathe some real air, try that funny powder you were curious about. If not, I guess three months in traffic can't be that bad, right? Hey, thanks for watching. I'm not used to making a video under this amount of time, so I, I hope it turned out alright. Before we go, I'd like to thank the people on Patreon who help make videos like this possible. I would especially like to thank Faye Lin, Walker, My Reed, MarioFan997, and Jonah Simpson. Links to everything in the description below. Take care of yourselves, and I hope to see you guys again sometime soon.